today we're going to be going over the components of an x-ray room. All right, so first, this is our x-ray unit right here. This is going to control the amount of exposure that the patient is going to get, as well as change um, different settings for when you take the x-rays, as far as like contrast and the strength of the radiation. So every single x-ray unit is going to be different between every single dental office. So we're just going to show you um, an example of what our x-ray unit looks like and an example of the settings. So first thing you're going to do over here is you're going to turn on your unit. And over here, this button right here is going to change um, the amount of radiation that's going to be exposed. So you can hit this button right here to change it between um, a child or an adult. Up here, we have different settings up here as well that also change um, the amount of seconds that the radiation will be exposed for the patient. So here in school, we use T2, and right up here where it says 0.27, that's gonna be the amount of seconds that the radiation is gonna be exposed for. And as you can see, this part right here actually can swivel back and forth, and then you can move it up and down. That way you can position it perfectly right in front of the target of the RIN. You also wanna double check to make sure that this arm right here is parallel to these lines right here to help you get the right angulation. And this right here is our exposure button. So this is what you will actually press in order to um, actually expose the x-ray. And as you can see right here, it's always set in a location where you can take it outside of the room and press it to expose the x-ray. That way us dental assistants don't get any extra radiation exposure. So now we're gonna go ahead and put barriers on anything in the x-ray room that we are going to touch or potentially contaminate while we take the x-rays. So to do that, we're going to use barrier tape right over here. We're gonna grab one and just lightly put it over the exposure button. And every office is gonna be different as well, so just make sure you do um, whatever your office would want you to do. We'll put one over the mouse just in case we need to um, change any settings on the computer. And we're also going to put one on the x-ray unit in case um, something happens with the x-ray unit and we need to change the settings or reset it. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and set up our sensor. So this is our digital sensor right here. There's many different sizes. There's size one, size two, depending on what your office needs for maybe a child or an adult patient. These are very expensive. Do you want to make sure that when you're using them that you're very careful about it, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this sensor cover sleeve right here. You wanna find the side that has an opening and then you wanna make sure that you place your sensor all the way in. Make sure it's covered. So we already showed in a previous video in detail how to arrange the rims and, and assemble them. So make sure you click the link on the screen and watch that video. So we're gonna start with the posterior rim right here, which is the yellow one. If you look closely at the sensor, you can tell that there is the side that has the wire as well as the flat side. We always wanna make sure that the flat side is gonna go in towards the rim. Right here on the bite block portion, there's always gonna be a part that you can adjust or move up and down. You wanna make sure you take the flat side, push it up against the movable part and secure it in. This one is a little bit different than the blue and red ones because the sensor is going to be horizontal versus vertical. Some common mistakes or incorrect ways to do this is sometimes people take this part right here and try to fit it into here, but as you can see, it doesn't really hold all the way or secure in. Sometimes they also take this side of the rim or this side of the sensor and they try to push it up here vertically and as you can see it doesn't stretch all the way up so you want to make sure that you have it horizontal push this side up just like that another key thing is you want to make sure that the tail of the sensor is going towards the metal arm if you put it this way again this is the incorrect way when you go to put this in the patient's mouth, the tail of the sensor is going to be inside of their mouth, 
which is very uncomfortable. Now we're gonna go over the anterior rim, which is the blue one. This one right here, same thing. We wanna make sure that the flat side is gonna go in towards the rim. Again, this part right here pushes up. Flat side's gonna go in, push it up, secure it in place, double check to make sure that the metal arm is on the same side as the sensor tail. Another incorrect way to do it is to put this side in. As you can see, it doesn't really fit. You also don't want the tail to be pointing in this direction. You wanna make sure that it's going this way. So again, incorrect way. You have the tail hanging here. It's very uncomfortable for the patient. You wanna make sure you put the flat side in, push this up, tail's going the same way as the metal arm. And lastly, with the fight wings or the red rims, again, this part right up here pushes up. You wanna make sure that the flat side of the sensor pushes up, make sure that the tail of the sensor is in the same direction as the arm. Incorrect way to do it, take this side right here with the wire side and try to push it in. Clearly it doesn't fit. You also don't want the sensor to go the opposite way of the arm because remember this is going to go towards the patient's mouth, very uncomfortable for them and it probably won't fit. So you wanna make sure you have the flat side in, tail going the same way as the metal arm. Before we start taking any x-rays, we wanna double check and make sure that our patient is all set up. So we have our lovely patient, Dexter, here. He has protective eyewear, and we need to place a lead apron on him. So you're gonna grab your lead apron, drape it over your patient, and you wanna make sure that this thyroid collar right here is secured here in the back, as well as this portion right here, right over their shoulders. So this apron right here, the lead apron, this is to protect the patient. Even with um, modern digital radiography, they don't really get a lot of radiation, but this is just an extra layer of protection for the patient to protect their internal organs. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and show you how to place the RIN inside of the patient's mouth. So we have the posterior RIN right here, which is the yellow one, so for any uh, molars or premolars. Today, we're gonna try to take a PA of number three. So right here, you wanna make sure that you place number three right in the center. That'll help you center the X-ray and get the perfect shot. So coming over here to our patient, patients obviously have cheeks. We're gonna take one finger and use my index finger to retract their cheek. You really can't go in straight with the ring. You kind of want to go in a little bit of an angle in order to fit it. So you go in like that. And you want to place it right close to where number three is, as far back as you can. And make sure that it's nice and centered in there. And then this is where you would have your patient bite. Now we're going to show you how to place an anterior ring. So we're going to do right here in the middle, eight and nine. Again, we can't really just go straight in with the rin. We kind of have to maneuver it around the patient's mouth. So you kind of go in almost like a scooping motion. And you want to make sure that the patient bites or at least rests their teeth right here on this little ridge area. As you can see right here, now that we have the sensor tail going the same way as the arm, everything is coming outside of the patient's mouth, which is what we want. And now we would just have our patient bite gently. And finally, we're gonna show you how to place the bite wings. So for bite wings, you're gonna do two x-ray shots on each side. You're gonna do one molar and one premolar for each side. So we're gonna start with the molar. The molar, we're going to just go straight in, all the way back. You want it to be as straight as possible. Make sure you get those open contacts. Again, Notice how the tail of the sensor is going outside of the patient's mouth, just like the metal arm is. You go straight back, make sure you get the distal, their last molar, have the patient bite and take the x-ray. I'll show you how to take the premolar shot. This one is a little bit different than taking the molar shot. When you go in, you actually have to kind of angle it a little bit and you wanna go as forward 
as possible to make sure that you can get the two premolars in that shot. All right, so today we're gonna to be showing you how to take um, four bite wings. So we're gonna use the red rinse today. You take four bite wings total. You do your molars on the right side, premolars, and then switch to the left side, premolars and molars. So there are many different types of bite wings. There are vertical bite wings, and then there are also horizontal bite wings. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to place horizontal bite wings. We're going to take a finger to retract our patient's cheek, going all the way in. You want to make sure that you get the distal of their last molar, have her bite gently. We're going to take this ring right here and push it as close as possible. Taking our x-ray tube head over here and we're going to line it straight onto the ring. We also want to double check to make sure that these two are parallel. Now we're gonna step over here with our exposure button, step outside of the room. And go over here and open, take it out. Double check onto the computer that we took the x-ray. That is our molar shot. We're gonna do our premolars now. Now for the premolar shot, this is a little bit different. We're gonna have our patient open you're going to go straight in initially, but then you're going to actually curve it a little bit to the side because of the arch of the mouth. So go ahead and bite down. Again, you want to make sure this is as close as possible. And she's smiling for me, so I can double check to make sure that I have the two premolars right there in the shot. We're going to take our x-ray head. Right here, again, just line it up with the ring. Double check to make sure that these are as parallel as you can get it. Take the exposure button, step outside of the room. Okay. Now that we're on the left side, we want to double check with our software to make sure that we are going to be taking the premolars first. So now we're gonna be taking our premolars on the patient's left side. So same thing, we're gonna have our patient open, retract, go in straight initially, but also angle it to the side and bite gently. We're gonna take our ring, push it as close as possible. Take our x-ray head, line it up with the ring. We don't, want to make sure that these are as parallel as we can get it. Step outside the room, close the x-ray, move this a little bit to the side and have your patient open. And finally, we are going to do the molar shot on the patient's left side. So same thing, we're going to just go straight in. Um, a trick that you can do if your patient's having a hard time tolerating the molar bite wing is you can place this part right here onto their tongue. Their tongue is translucent so it won't show up on the x-ray and that way you don't hit the patient's palate or hurt them. So again, we're gonna go ahead and have her open, retract with your finger and you're just gonna go straight in as far back as you can and bite gently. Push the ring, ring all the way in. Take this right here. Make sure it's lined up with the ring and we're as parallel as we can be. Oops, sorry, open. So now we're gonna show you how not to take a premolar shot. So normally for molar shots, you go straight in. And for premolar shots, when you go in, you kind of go in straight at first, but you always want to angle it since that's the curve of the mouth right there in order to get those open contacts and prevent overlapping. So I'm going to show you again how to not do your premolar shot. I'm just going to go straight in and just have her bite. 
Normally you would take the ring and push it as close as possible, but I'm showing you how not to do it. So I'm just gonna leave it just like that. And then when you place your PID, normally you would want it to be as parallel as possible, but I'm going to purposely angle it very not straight or crooked. 